Well, for many families, especially Latino families, the kitchen is simply the heart of the home and food is really about making connections. Food can connect us to people and each other and our cultures. It also allows us to connect to different cultures. In honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, we have award-winning chef and TV personality, Aaron Sanchez. He is cooking up a special meal. It is so wonderful to see you. Buenos dias. I love you, muerto, on your t-shirt. How are you? Thank you. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. I miss New York. I don't. I longer know. I no longer live there. I live in New Orleans now. But big hug to all of you guys in the studio. Love what you guys do. Thank you so much. We're, we're getting your virtual hug. I know the kitchen is obviously a huge part of your life. What are you going to cook for us today? And how does this connect to cooking when you grew up? I know your mom had a big influence on you. Yeah, my mom had a restaurant in New York City for 30 years, so I grew very much grew up in the business. Hispanic Heritage uh, Month is so significant and important for me. It's a chance to remember all the contributions that Hispanics and Latinos have made all over the world, and what better way to do that but with food, right? So these uh, these chicken enchiladas really speak to me because, you know, my longstanding partner, Cacique, who I've been with for over 10 years, they are dedicated to family, authenticity, and great quality ingredients. And these enchiladas really speak to that. So basically the way it starts is, is you have a, a bowl of the shredded chicken, right? You can use rotisserie chicken that's been left over, shred that up. To this, we're gonna add some jalapeno for a little bit of a kick with the seeds, always remember that. Mm -hmm. Some queso fresco. Now this queso fresco is uh, the most popular cheese used in Mexico. It's creamy, it's luscious. It kind of tempers down some of the heat. To this, I'm gonna add a little bit of enchilada sauce to add some additional flavor to the actual filling, okay? Now, once we have that, I'm just gonna mix it up very softly. And then to that, I'm gonna start to make the enchiladas, okay? Now, some people are intimidated by them. Are you guys intimidated by enchiladas? I am not intimidated by anything. And I was just gonna say, you're Mexicano, yo soy Boricua, but I still use your, uh -huh. your queso fresco in my empanadillas. So yes, please I bring, br I wish you were here so we could all go. <laughs> Everyone in the studio was like. Andale. Rah, 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 rah. Well, sigue, I'll be there sigue. soon, I promise, okay? Thank you. All right, so to that, we're gonna kind of bathe the, the, uh, the tortillas in the sauce, right? And the idea is to make them soft and pliable, huh. right? Oh, wow. Uh, further enforce that flavor. And to this, we're gonna simply add the filling and then put it into like an oven-ready cast iron skillet, something that can go quickly into the oven. To that, we'll take a couple of enchiladas and we'll do the roll. Chef, so you is wanna there put something some pressure, to... Make sure is there something to dipping the tortilla in as opposed to drizzling yeah. with the enchilada yeah. sauce? Yeah, the idea with the dipping allows the tortilla to soak up that flavor, but also to make it soft and easy to and easy to roll. So that's really kind of the, the, the mission behind it. Um, and the idea is you just want to kind of roll these up a little bit, They're very simply. I've done some ahead of time. And then you, you bathe it with some more sauce. You put it in the oven. Heat it up, and this is where the magic starts happening, Ooh. okay? It's all about the garnish, guys, okay? Now, for me, there's nothing better than a little bit of crema mexicana. Cacique does a great job with it. It's creamy, it's luscious, and it just adds that finishing touch to anything with good spice. Mine never okay? looks that it's good drizzle. when I do that, by the way. <laughs> chef, <laughs> chef, I, I, will, I will, an unnamed co-host of mine and I had a cook-off a couple uh, of weeks mm. ago and he yep. was trying to make elote, and he was like, I hate oh, mayonnaise. And I said, I don't use mayonnaise, I use crema. He thought I was crazy, but now he's watching you do it, and he realizes, always listen to a Latina. She I love that you said an unknown co-host, as if we weren't on TV together doing and, uh, it. Together. And un <laughs> yeah. My co-host who shall be unnamed. Right, but anonymous. he's tall and skinny and Jewish, right. that's all I have to say. <laughs> I, I love that. It doesn't roll his R's <laughs> when he should. And I, and I know better to mess with a, a Boricua woman. You just let her, you let her win every time, okay? Because <laughs> you're a smart man, okay? Yes. Exactly. But, uh, yeah, and then you have your garnish. A little bit of queso fresco, a little bit of cilantro, and you're good to go. This is really what it's about, Hispanic Heritage Month, celebrating authentic ingredients. We got it here. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy and have fun. Let's I, celebrate. We do, but I'm not ready to let you go because I know one of the things as a chef and just as a Mexicano, you say that is so rewarding and respectful to connect with other cultures, especially through food. What do you mean by that exactly? Well, the idea is that if you have a chance to go, you know, you live in a city that uh, has a Latin community or, uh, or neighborhood, go out there and venture and visit that neighborhood 
and go to the stores and talk to people that are that have their hands on the ingredients and that from there can transport you to a special place because then now you're embracing someone else's culture through food and that's the language we all speak right so that's kind of what i mean by that I, I love it, and I want to actually bring in my crazy co-hosts as well because we are literally salivating. We can't have dinner parties the way that we wanted to have dinner no. parties because of co uh, COVID. Right. But do you have any suggestions for us? Can we zoom you? You want to like give out a send <laughs> yeah? Out a zoom you guys link? can zoom me. Okay. Well, you know what's really you know what's popping now? People are doing happy hours. Uh, yes. My yes. mom's like doing like a little Zoom happy hour. Where we can all have a cocktail or something and have oh, fun. Oh please. Okay. Do you like a margarita? Yeah, I love a margarita. Mine margarita is the best because I, I do it very old school. I do orange juice, Ooh. lime juice, agave orange. nectar, and ah. tequila. Wow. So no oh. triple sec. Oh, that's fancy. So I was going to say triple sec would usually yeah. be the replacement mm -hmm. for the orange juice, right? Wow. Exactly. Very cool. Wow. Yeah, interesting. And tequila but makes you a better person. It and does. <laughs> at all hours. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So these these ingredients right here also make you a better person. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, be yeah, a better man. person. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I, that, that's a great philosophy. Aaron Sanchez, yeah. thank you so much for sharing your recipe with us, for sharing your culture with us. We absolutely adore you. We can't wait until we can see you in real life, so you can yes. be right over here cooking. And Smelling until it. then, yes, yeah, right. I will have una margarita Arch. after the show is over. Or maybe in the just commercial one? break. Very sweet. It's orange juice, so you can have it in the morning. She said <laughs> You're just right. one. Yes. I know, big it's hug. souped up orange juice. Right. <laughs> big hug. Did you say just one margarita?